Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the important multiple choice questions from the antihypertensives. In our previous video, we have discussed the 10 important multiple choice questions and today let us continue with the part 2 of this video series. 11th one. Select the mediators that mainly acts as vasoconstrictors. P. Epinephrine Q. Endothelin R. Angiotensin 2 S. Adenosine so here the options are A. PS, B. QR, C. PQR and D. QRS. So here which type of mediators mainly act as vasoconstrictors? So what is the right answer for this question? Here all of these mediators are acting on the vascular smooth muscle to produce either vasoconstriction or vasodilatation. And here we have to identify the mediators which mainly produce the vasoconstriction. So here the right answer is C, P, Q, R. Epinephrine, endothelin and angiotensin 2, all these three mediators act as vasoconstrictors and they act through the increase in the IP3 and diacylglycerol. This IP3 and diacylglycerol increase the intracellular calcium levels within the vascular smooth muscle which results in the vasoconstriction. On the other hand, adenosine is one of the vasodilator which increase the cyclic AMP levels within the vascular smooth muscle resulting in the vasodilatation. But here, epinephrine can produce both vasoconstriction as well as vasodilatation. Epinephrine is one of the mediator of the sympathetic system which can act through the alpha-1 receptors thereby it can increase the IP3 and diacylglycerol and as the IP3 and diacylglycerol increases it produces the vasoconstriction. Similarly, it can act through the beta receptors. These beta receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic AMP. And as the cyclic AMP increases, it produces the vasodilatation. But which effect is mainly observed with the epinephrine? Epinephrine mainly produces a vasoconstriction on the systemic blood vessels. And it produces a vasodilatation at the blood vessels supplying to the skeletal muscle and the liver. So the main effect of the epinephrine is always vasoconstriction. Similarly, adenosine can produce the two effects on the smooth muscle. It can produce the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle thereby it produces a vasodilatation but at the same time it can produce the contraction of the bronchial smooth muscle resulting in the bronchoconstriction. That's why we have one of the drug theophylline which is a methylxanthine which can antagonize the adenosine receptors thereby it can prevent the bronchoconstriction. So theophylline is used as a bronchodilator because it is a adenosine receptor antagonist. Twelfth one. Identify the drug by the structure given below. So this is the structure of the drug and we have to identify what is the name of the drug. A. Minoxidil B. Bucinton C. Hydralazine and D. Nicorandil So here this structure is having the one of the functional group that is a hydrazine and hydrazine containing one of vasodilator is the hydralazine. So here the hydralazine is having the hydrazine which is attached to the thalazine ring system. So hydralazine is nothing but the thalazine 1 hydrazine. So this is one of the vasodilator having the hydrazine moiety. 13th one. Which of the following actions are related with the angiotensin 2? P. Smooth muscle proliferation. Q. Increase in the sympathetic activity. R. Increase in the aldosterone secretion. S. Sodium excretion. So options are A, QR, B, RS, C, PQR and D, QRS. Angiotensin 2 is one of the important mediator that is released from the renin angiotensin system. And here which type of actions are related with the angiotensin 2? So here the right answer is the PQR. So angiotensin 2 can produce a smooth muscle proliferation. It can increase the sympathetic activity as well as it can also increase the aldosterone secretion. But what is its effect on the sodium excretion? The angiotensin 2 can increase the sodium reabsorption which results in the retention of the sodium within the body. So angiotensin 2 is one of the important mediator which is having the different types of actions. It can act through the angiotensin 2 receptor subtype 1 which are commonly known as AT1 receptors. Through this receptor it can act on the vascular smooth muscle to increase the IP3 and diacylglycerol. All we have discussed the IP3 and diacylglycerol increase the intracellular calcium levels which produce the vasoconstriction. Similarly, angiotensin 2 can also increase the norepinephrine release which increases the sympathetic activity. 
and it can also increase the aldosterone secretion aldosterone is one of the important mediator which is responsible for the sodium reabsorption from the correcting tubules so by all of these mechanisms the angiotensin 2 can produce the vasoconstriction and apart from this vasoconstriction angiotensin 2 can also produce the hypertrophy and hyperplasia so smooth muscles can be proliferated by prolonged action of the angiotensin 2. 14th one select the drug that is not indicated for the treatment of hypertension a labetalol b phenoldapalm c yohimbine d clonidine so here which drug is not indicated for the treatment of hypertension so the right answer is the yohimbine yohimbine is a alpha 2 antagonist these alpha 2 antagonists are not used to decrease the hypertension instead the drug like clonidine which is a alpha 2 agonist is used to treat the hypertension and phenoldopam is one of the drug which is a dopamine agonist particularly produces a renal vasodilatation and labetalol is one of a alpha and beta blocker which can be used in the treatment of hypertension during the pregnancy so here alpha 2 antagonist like the yohimbine is not used for the treatment of hypertension so what is the action of these adrenergic receptors on the blood pressure first of all let us see the alpha 1 receptors which are present on the vascular smooth muscle these alpha 1 receptors are coupled with the increase in the ip3 and diacylglycerol and as ip3 and diacylglycerol are going to be increased it produces the vasoconstriction similarly alpha 2 receptors are coupled with the decrease in the cyclic kmp but these alpha 2 receptors are mainly present as pre and because they are going to present as a presynaptic they are going to decrease the release of the norepinephrine thereby they can decrease the central sympathetic activity and beta 1 receptors are coupled with the increase in the cyclic kmp but their action on the heart mainly influence the blood pressure even beta 2 receptors are present on the vascular smooth muscle but they are not present on all types of vascular smooth muscle they are present only on the blood vessels supplying to the skeletal muscle as well as the liver therefore the beta 2 receptors are not involved in the control of systemic blood pressure so the systemic blood pressure can be affected by beta 1 receptors as the beta 1 receptors are present on the heart and when the cyclic AMP levels increases it results in the increased rate and force of contraction of the heart which results in the increased pumping pressure therefore blood pressure increases in this way the blood pressure is going to be controlled by alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta 1 receptors here alpha 1 receptors are directly controlling the blood pressure by producing the vasoconstriction so we can use the alpha 1 antagonist like the prazosin terazosin and doxazosin all these are the alpha 1 antagonists used in the treatment of hypertension but these alpha 1 antagonists are more preferred in the treatment of severe hypertension similarly alpha 2 agonists can be used to treat the hypertension because the alpha 2 receptors are going to decrease the central sympathetic activity so we have one of the drug clonidine which acts on the alpha 2 receptors and finally the beta receptors can be blocked by beta blockers which can reduce the cardiac stimulation thereby they can decrease the blood pressure so we have so many drugs like the propranolol etanolol metoprolol so many drugs are there which are the beta blockers that can be used in the treatment of hypertension but here alpha 2 antagonists like the yohimbine should not be used 15th one all of the following drugs are activators of the ATP sense to potassium channels except A. Nicorandil, B. Levosimindan, C. Epoprostinol, and D. Dizoxide. So, here, right answer is the Epoprostinol. Epoprostinol is a prostaglandin analog, particularly, it is a prostaglandin E2 analog, which is also known as prostacycline. So, Epoprostinol is a prostacycline analog which produces the vasodilatation by release of the nitric oxide on the other hand nicorandil is a potassium channel activator as well as it releases the nitric oxide and levosimendan acts again by dual mechanism it it activates the atp sense to potassium channels as well as it increases the calcium binding with the troponin resulting in the increased force of contraction and dioxide is one of the vasodilator which activates the atp sense to potassium channels so here the drugs like the nicorandil, levosimendan, dioxide, all these are activating the ATP sense to potassium channels but epoprostinol is a prostaglandin E2 analog. 16th one. Select the indications of sildenafil from the following. P. Ocular hypertension. Q. Benign prostatic hyperplasia. R. Severe hypertension. 
S. Pulmonary hypertension. So options are A. Q only. B. S only. C. Q and R. And D. P or S. So here what is the right answer? The right answer is pulmonary hypertension. The sildenafil is one of the drug which acts as a fast food esterase type 5 inhibitor which can be used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction as well as this drug can also be used in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. Since this drug produces a vasodilatation it can be used in the pulmonary hypertension but it cannot be used in the other types of hypertension like the ocular hypertension, essential hypertension and severe hypertension. 17th one. Select one of the drug indicator for the hypertension during the pregnancy. A. Valsartan B. Etanolol C. Methyl Dopa D. Enalapril So here which type of antihypertensive can be safely used during the pregnancy? So the right answer is the Methyl Dopa. So here all other drugs are the teratogenic in nature. Valsartan is a angiotensin receptor blocker and etanolol is a beta blocker and enlapril is a AC inhibitor. All these three category of drugs are having some teratogenicity. But among the beta blockers, etanolol is one of the drugs which is having the more teratogenic activity. So it should be carefully used during the pregnancy. But methyl dopa is uh, somewhat safe during the pregnancy. So it can be used to treat the hypertension during the pregnancy. Now let us see which type of antihypertensives can be used during the pregnancy. The first line drug is the methyl dopa which acts as a false precursor. When this drug is given, this methyl dopa is converted to methyl norepinephrine which is a false neurotransmitter so it cannot activate the adrenergic receptors thereby it reduce the blood pressure. And this methyl dopa is the drug of choice in the treatment of uh, hypertension during the pregnancy. Similarly, another drug is the labetlol. Labetlol is a alpha and beta blocker which is again safe during the pregnancy. And we can also use few of the other drugs like the hydralazine, nifedipine and few of the beta blockers. All we have seen etanolol is somewhat teratogenic but few of the beta blockers can be used in the treatment of hypertension during the pregnancy. As well as the blood pressure can also be controlled by using few of the diuretics. All these are somewhat safe during the pregnancy. But two category of drugs are strictly contraindicated. They are the AC inhibitors and ERBs because they are teratogenic in nature. They are not preferred in the treatment of hypertension during the pregnancy. 18th one. Which of the following listed drugs is not indicated for pulmonary hypertension? A. Iloprost B. Moxonidine C. Desoxin and D. Ambricintan So here which drug is not indicated for the pulmonary hypertension? The right answer is the B. Moxonidine Moxonidine is a centrally acting antihypertensive which acts on the imidazolin receptors which are coupled with the alpha 1 receptors. So this drug can be used as an antihypertensive when other antihypertensives are not working but this drug is not used for the pulmonary hypertension. On the other hand, iloprost is one of the prostaglandin analog which can be used for pulmonary hypertension and desoxin is one of the inotropic agent which can increase the force of contraction thereby it can increase the cardiac output during the pulmonary hypertension and ambricintan is a endothelin receptor antagonist which again used in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. So here the correct answer is the moxonidine which is not used for the pulmonary hypertension. Now let us see which type of drugs are used for the pulmonary hypertension. One category of drugs are the prostaglandins. Already we have seen one of the drugs is the iloprost. Similarly, other drugs like the Baraprost and Epoprostinol can be used. And endothelin antagonists like the Bosintan and uh, Ambricintan, Cetaxintan, all these are the endothelin antagonists that can be used. Similarly, we can use the phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors. One of the drugs is the Sildenafil. All these drugs are the vasodilators that can be used in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. But we cannot use the direct vasodilators like the calcium channel blockers. And during this pulmonary hypertension, the oxygen supply is somewhat reduced, so which can be improved by inotropic agents. So, desoxin is used as an inotropic agent, and we can also use the diuretics in order to decrease the pulmonary hypertension. 19th one Which of the following drugs produce hirsutism as one of the side effects? A. Methyl dopa, B. Losartan, C. Minoxidil, D. Hydralazine. So, it is a very easy question and well-known drug here. 
So the right answer is the C. Minoxidil is one of the drugs which produces unwanted hair growth. So it produces one of the side effects what we call hirsutism. And as it promotes the hair growth, it can be used in the treatment of alopecia, loss of hair. For baldness, the minoxidil can be given by topical route to promote the hair growth. 20th one. Select the drug that is contraindicated the renal bilateral artery stenosis. A. Minoxidil. B. Methyl dopa. C. Metoprolol. D. Candisartan. So here, which drug is uh, contraindicated in the renal bilateral artery stenosis? So the right answer is the Candisartan. This Candisartan is one of the ARB angiotensin receptor blocker, which can decrease the actions of the angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is important for the vasoconstriction of the renal arteries. So when these angiotensin 2 receptors are blocked, it results in the decreased glomerular filtration, thereby decreases the renal function. In the renal bilateral artery stenosis, both efferent as well as efferent arterioles are going to be constricted. So in such conditions, ARBs can further decrease the renal functionality, therefore they are contraindicated in this situation. Similarly, we have another category of drugs like the AC inhibitors, which are again contraindicated in the renal bilateral artery stenosis. So these are the another 10 important multiple choice questions from the antihypertensive category. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.